Welcome to our lecture online and now let's take a closer look at what radiation really is, what the sources of radiation are, what types of radiation exist and what really causes radiation. So again let's say we have an object here and we can imagine that it's radiating out energy. Um, it's, what it does is it's radiating out electromagnetic radiation and what's really going on here is if we take a look at the surface of an object we can imagine, of course, at the surface you have all these atoms right there, and those atoms are vibrating because heat has been put into the object, and that causes the atoms to then vibrate back and forth. So the, the heat that's stored inside the object is really stored as a function of the kinetic energy of the vibrating atoms. And of course, each atom is made up of charged particles. We have the protons in the nucleus of each atom, and as the atom is moving back and forth, the electric field around the nucleus, it moves back and forth as well. So imagine we take one of those uh, atoms right here, so we're blowing it up, and uh, this is positively charged, and it's vibrating back and forth, and of course, uh, the atom has an electric field that's emanating away from it. And as this, as this object is moving back and forth, this little atom or this little molecule is moving back and forth, it carries with it the electric field, which causes the electric field then to oscillate it, and therefore that is really what the source of electromagnetic radi radiation is. So we have ENM, ENM waves, electromagnetic ra radiation, moving away from each atom, and in unison that then causes uh, objects to radiate out energy. Which means, if we talk about types of, or source of radiation, anything in the universe that has atoms radiates electromagnetic radiation. Even ice cubes, the stars, blackboards, whiteboards, your shoes, your bodies, everything, everything in the universe radiates out energy. And so, the amount of energy that is radiated does depend upon the temperature and the surface area of the object, and the type of radiation that, that emanates away from the object depends upon the the uh, frequency of the vibration of the object. If the atoms in the object vibrate very slowly, then of course you have wavelengths with very slow frequency, and therefore very long wavelengths that emanate away. If the atoms vibrate very quickly, then the, the frequency duration is, is correspondingly quick, and then the wavelengths shorten uh, in, in length as the radiation emanates from the object. So uh, what kind of radiation can you get from the various types of, uh, of objects, or actually same object at different temperatures? Well, let's say the very long radiation, uh, those are called radio waves. So objects that uh, are not at very high temperature will, will radiate out radio waves. Uh, then the next wave, if the temperature goes up and the wavelengths get shorter, then uh, the next one is what we call microwaves. And if the temperature goes up even more, then the object will begin to uh, radiate out infrared radi radiation. If the temperature goes even higher, then the wavelengths get shorter, and now we have visible light. If the temperature goes even higher than that, then the wavelengths get very short, and then we have ultraviolet radiation. If the temperature continues to go up, now we have very, very short wavelengths, so we have what we call X-rays. And finally, if the temperature goes up tremendously high, then the wavelengths are very short, and then we have what we call gamma radiation, also called gamma rays. Okay, so you can see that the types of radiation that comes from an object simply depends upon its temperature and simply depends upon the the, the uh, frequency of the oscillation of the atoms within the material. Now, for example, what will the temperature have to be in order for us to get visible light? Well, for that we have an equation called Wien's Law. Wien is the physicist that determined the relationship between the temperature of the object and the wavelength, and therefore also the frequency of the radiation that emanates from the object. And Wien said that the temperature is equal to 0.0029 divided by the wavelength and correspondingly we can go ahead and say that the wavelength there is equal to 0.0029 divided by the temperature. So if you know the temperature of the object you can figure out the wavelength of the radiation. If you know the wavelength of the object you can figure out the temperature of the object. For example the Sun. The Sun radiates visible light primarily in the yellow color and the wavelength of yellow color light is around 500 nanometers. So when we plug that into this equation, we can say that the temperature is equal to 0.0029 divided by 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And if you divide this into that, you find 
that uh, this is equal to, this is actually meters per uh, Kelvin, to get the right units, and so this is equal to 5,800 Kelvin. So you can see that we were able to figure out the temperature of the sun simply by finding this relationship and knowing the wavelengths of the light that we get from the sun. Conversely, if you want to know what the temperature is, for example, if you want to measure the temperature of your body, you go to the doctor's office, they put an infrared detector in your ear, and they measure the wavelength of the radiation coming from your ear, which is coming from the inside of your body, and so from that, they figure out the temperature of your body. So they plug in the, the um, thermometer, measures the wavelength, and they can then find the corresponding temperature. So that relationship is good for the sun as well as for the human body and so forth. So at least you can see that depending upon the temperature of the object, we have different wavelengths. And notice how the wavelength um, uh, in, the, in the frequency is related to the speed of light. So C, the speed of light, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. This is the simple equation of the traveling of a wave. Uh, normally we put in the velocity here, but of course for electromagnetic radiation, the velocity is the speed of light. And if we want to know the frequency of the vibrations of visible light, let's say that we have a wavelength of 500 nanometers uh, right here, then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try and find out the frequency of the atoms in an object that give off visible light. So the frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength, and the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and if we divide it by the wavelength of 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, which is 500 nanometers, we will get the frequency of the oscillations. Now for that, I want to make sure I get the right answer, and I have to find my calculator here. So let's do that with 3 e to the 8 divided by 500 e to the 9 minus equals, and we get a frequency of 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Now notice 10 to the 9 is billion, 10 to the 12th is trillion, that is 600 trillion hertz. In other words, the, the vibrations of an object, the vibrations in the atoms of an object that put out visible light, they oscillate at 600 trillion times per second, and then the radiation that emanates from that object will then also oscillate at the frequency of 600 trillion times per second because the frequency of the radiation will match the frequency of the oscillation of the atoms and that's how electromagnetic radiation is produced. So knowing the temperature you should be able to figure out the wavelength then you plug in the wavelength you'll figure out the frequency and then you can see how fast the atoms vibrate in the object that then emanates that electromagnetic radiation. So it's pretty neat, it's pretty interesting how electromagnetic radiation is produced, the different types that we have and that it all comes down from the vibration of the atoms in the object. Knowing Wien's law, we can associate the wavelength to the temperature or the temperature to the wavelength, and from that we can find out the frequency of the oscillation in the atoms, which then give off electromagnetic radiation at the very same frequency. So I think it's pretty neat how that happens. And so in the next videos, we'll show you some examples of how to actually calculate the heat radiating from different objects.